In this video I'll go through my entire portfolio and reveal the overall performance for the first three quarters of the year and since I started way back in 2009. I'll also reveal what I've been buying and selling and my plans for the rest of the year. For the last 14 years I've been investing in mainly large cap UK companies which I hold for the long term. In recent years I've added several exchange traded funds to increase diversification and reduce risk. I make good use of a stocks and shares ISA. This means I don't have to pay dividend or capital gains tax. I'll go through each sector in ascending order of performance for the year so far. This is not investing advice and I'm simply showing you my own journey. In the chemical sector I only have one company, Croda, and it's had a disastrous year so far. As I go through the slides this figure shows the average price change in 2023 for the companies I have in a given sector. It's only based on the companies I hold and not the industry as a whole. This figure shows the value of my current holding. This figure shows how the price has changed this year so far. And because Croda is the only company I hold in the chemical sector, it will be the same as the figure at the top. And finally, here is the dividend yield. I have £8,400 invested in Croda, so I would currently expect to receive dividends of around £186 a year. In the food and tobacco sector, I have three companies. British American Tobacco and Imperial Brands pay large dividends, but the share price is down heavily this year. Tate & Lyle has fared a little better, but it is still negative for the first nine months of the year. Next is the renewable energy sector, and I have three companies. Bluefield specialise in solar energy and Greencoat in wind energy. Both are down this year, despite relatively high dividends. The third company is the Renewables Infrastructure Group, which has a mixture of solar and wind energy assets. In the consumer goods sector, I have three companies. Diageo and Unilever have strong brand loyalty and powerful economic moats. Over the long term, they should do well, but Diageo is having a tough year, down nearly 16%. At long last, we have a company that's actually in the green, Halion, which was spun off from GSK last year and is now paying a small dividend. In the utility sector, I have three companies. These two are down slightly but offer fairly decent dividends. The third company is United Utilities and it's down slightly more than the other two. Now, winter is fast approaching and if you are considering changing your energy provider in order to save money, then you may want to take a look at Octopus Energy, who I've used for over two years. They have been recommended by Witch for six years in a row. If you sign up using the link in the video description, then we could both get £50 of credit. Next is an exchange traded fund from Vanguard, and this one has the ticker code VHYL. It gives you exposure to around 1,800 global companies, which pay higher dividends. The shares are down slightly, but it's an ETF I really like, as it gives me global diversification, as well as some decent dividends. In the banking sector, I own four companies, and the average share price is more or less unchanged. Very different fortunes for these two, with HSBC up an impressive 22%. It also pays a relatively high dividend of 5.4%. Both Lloyds and IG Group are down, with IG having an extremely poor year, falling 17%. In the pharmaceutical sector, I have two companies which I've held for over a decade. On average, this sector is relatively unchanged. AstraZeneca is the largest listed company in the FTSE 100. Hardly any change at all here for my FTSE 100 ETF. This one has the ticker code ISF. The yield is currently 3.8% and you get exposure to the whole of the UK large cap index with just one share. In the insurance sector, I have only one company, Aviva, and it's more or less unchanged. The dividend is high at 8.2%. Next is the oil and gas sector and I have two companies. Both BP and Shell are up around 10% this year. They pay dividends four times a year. Another ETF now and this one tracks the S&P 500. The ticker code is IUSA and it's up 11% so far this year. My second highest performer this year is the retail sector and I only have one company, Tesco, and the shares are doing well, up nearly 16%. I'm happy to hold for the long term. My highest performing sector so far this year is defence and aerospace, up almost 70% on average, with Rolls-Royce soaring 123%. 
Air travel is booming and Rolls-Royce makes much of its revenue from servicing aircraft engines. Now for all my buys and sells and before I begin I'd appreciate a quick tap of that like button as it really helps out the channel. With the portfolio now paying out an average of £1,200 a month in dividends, I don't always have to put new money in to buy more shares. Here are all the trades I've made over the last nine months. I've put more into my S&P 500 ETF than any other share. I buy it when I fill up my ISA and I can keep it outside as it has a very low dividend yield. Regarding individual companies, I put more into Rolls-Royce than any other. This is another one I keep outside the ISA as it doesn't currently pay a dividend. At the bottom of the table, you can see I've sold a few oil shares to rebalance the portfolio. Oil has done very well recently and it was starting to dominate the portfolio. Why not subscribe to see what I buy next? Cash in the portfolio currently stands at 11,700. Now for the portfolio performance so far this year. At the end of 2022, the portfolio stood at 359,000 and after the first nine months of this year, the portfolio stands at just over 401,000. £22,000 of new money has gone in, giving me a net gain of just over £20,000 for the first nine months of this year. The percentage gain is 5.7%. I'm now going to compare the performance of the portfolio this year with other indices. To do this fairly, I'll strip out any dividends I've received so far this year. With dividend payments ignored, the capital gain is 2.3% for the first nine months of the year. You can see in this table that the portfolio has outperformed the FTSE 100, 250 and the FTSE All Share Index, but it's performed poorly against the S&P 500 and the All World Index. As you saw earlier, I've put more into the S&P 500 than any other share and I'll continue to do so. And now for my overall performance since I started in 2009. I made plenty of mistakes in the early days as I was learning and these results include everything. The total amount I put into the platform is 247k but remember I didn't put all of this in at the start in one lump sum. I simply drip fed in spare money each month. If I had been able to put all this money in right at the start then my gains would have been much greater and of course I would have done better if I had invested into an index tracking ETF right from the start. But they were not mainstream back then and I was limited to buying individual UK companies on my Barclays platform. As you have seen the value of the portfolio stands at 401k giving me a current gain of 154,000 or 62.6%. Many investors will have done much better than this of course and I'm only showing you my own journey. I made mistakes along the way and to see those mistakes and what I learned from them then click this video here. See you next time and happy investing.